In this video, we'll talk about cryptography. So what happens is on the internet, basically you send information between the servers or from client to server or server to client. And when you say you are sending this data through the internet, anyone in between can check this data. Of course, right, we have something called man in middle attack. Basically, they can see your data, they can modify the data. So let's say if, uh, if person A says to person B, hey, let's meet at a cafe at 5 p.m. But then when the data is passing, the person C says, okay, I want to make some modification here. So they go there, they change this data from 5 to 6 and they send it to B. Now, here we are not just doing a passive attack where you are able to read the data, you are also doing an active attack. Now, how do we secure ourselves from this attack? Now, of course, there are, we have to use some mechanism uh, where at least other person cannot see your data. Even if they can see data, they should not be able to read it. And second, they should not be able to make the changes. Even if they make the changes, B should be able to know that something has changed. And we can do that with the help of cryptography. Now, in cryptography, we use a concept of encryption and decryption. So let's say uh, when A is sending data to B now, what you can do is you can do something called a encryption here. Now, to do the encryption, what we basically do is we use a key and we change our data in such a way that no one else can read it. Of course, when you send the same data to B, B cannot read that data now. That's weird. I mean, we wanted B to know the data, right? But then what if you can share the key with B and now B should be able to decrypt it. So encryption simply means converting your normal text to ciphertext and decryption simply means that you're converting your ciphertext to a normal text. So when A is writing the content, that will be your and uh, that's your normal text, but then you have to encrypt it so that no one can read it. Even A cannot read that now. Uh, of course, A can read if you can, A can decrypt it. But now when you send this data to B, now B cannot read it, so they have to decrypt it and they will simply, they can able to read that. Now, even if C is able to get the data, C cannot read that because it is encrypted. Now, how, how can B read? Because B has a key. C has no idea what that key is. Now, this key is important here. Now, key can be of two different types. A key can be a symmetric key or it can be an asymmetric key. So in the symmetric key, what you have is you have keys which are same. So A and B will have the same keys. Uh, of course, this can be any normal text or normal string which, which you can use as a key, uh, but they will be having the same key. So if A is encrypting the data with this key, the same key has to be there with B as well to decrypt it. That is called a symmetric cryptography or symmetric key cryptography. Uh, the problem with this is this key need to be shared before the communication. Of course, they cannot share this key on the internet now because if they share this key on the internet, C can see the key and then C will say, okay, I got the key now. Even if you encrypt it, I can read that. So there's one challenge here. They, this key need to be shared beforehand. Maybe they can meet somewhere. Uh, in person, share the key and go back and do the communication. Again, a weird way of sharing a key, but again, uh, it's very it's very famous. The symmetric cryptography it is faster, and you can also have a large key size. And the bigger the key size you have, it's it's more secure. Uh, the challenge is of course the uh, key sharing, and also what if you have multiple members in the network? We have D, E, and maybe A want to do communication with D now. So of course they have to use a different key. They cannot use the same key which is shared by A and B. Uh, maybe if, if you say K one. Uh, is the key used by A and B. Now, A cannot use the same key with D. Uh, they need to have a different key, let's say K, K2. What if A or D wants to communicate with E? Of course, they have to have a different key, which is K3. Uh, that's how you basically uh, have multiple keys in symmetric key cryptography. And the problem is managing this key becomes difficult. What if A want to communicate with everyone? So A has to manage those number of those amount of keys with A. The solution for this is asymmetric cryptography, where you don't have a symmetric key. Of course, that's what asymmetric means. But what, what, what you basically have is you have a concept of public and private key. Now, how this works? For the encryption and decryption, you'll be using two keys, encrypt, uh, the public key and a private key. And how that works is if you encrypt a data with a private key, then you have to decrypt the data with your public key. And when you encrypt the data with public key, you have to decrypt the data with private key. So basically, uh, you, you have to use the opposite keys for encryption and decryption. You can't use the same key for both. Now, what happens is, now since private key is a private key, only the owner knows the private key. What about the public key? Public key is known by everyone in the network. 
Okay, now what's the advantage of this? So let's say uh, there's a public key and private key with uh, the B and now A wants to send data. Now question arises, what key A will use? Uh, can, I, can A use a private key of B? Of course not, private key is only known, known by B. But then public key is known by everyone. So let's say we have a central repository where you have all these keys, uh, public keys of all the members in the network. Right? So they don't have to basically ask B to give you a public key. Everyone knows what is a public key for B. And since it's a public key, there's no risk here. Now when A wants to send this data, what A will do is, A will use B's public key to encrypt. The beauty is, when B receives the message, B can decrypt with its own private key. And only B can do that because B knows the private key. What if C comes in between and say, hey, I got the data, now I want to decrypt it. C can't decrypt that with C's private, private key. It can be only decrypt with the B's private key. Okay, that's how you basically use a asymmetric cryptography here. Now there are different algorithms available. Now the question is, in the, everyone in the network will have their own private key and public key, right? And they know their private key and public key is known by everyone. Now when D want to send data to E, basically they will be, uh, so th let's say D want to send data to E, so D will use E's public key to encrypt and E will use E's private key to decrypt. So that's how basically the asymmetric works. There are different algorithms available for symmetric key. Uh, we have algorithm like AES or DES. There are multiple algorithms available. Every, one, every algorithm have their own strength and weaknesses. Uh, same goes for asymmetric key where you have RSA, ECC. So we have multiple algorithms available to use. Now, depending upon different situation, we can use different algorithms. And uh, some, some are faster, some are more secured. So depending upon that, you can use, uh, use any algorithm there. But now question arise, let's say, uh, a is sending the data to B and say, hey, I want to meet at 5 p.m. And maybe there's nothing secret here, okay? So now let's say A want to send a message to B by saying, hey, let's meet at 5 p.m. And the message is going on the network. Now C comes in between and say, hey, let me just ha hack that packet. And now let me send a new packet. And C says, let's meet at 6 p.m. Now, how C will encrypt it? So what C will do is, so C will use B's public key, which A also did and send that message to B, and B says, okay, I got a message and it is encrypted. Let me use my private key to decrypt. Decryption done. So that means I have to meet at 6 p.m. Okay, so when you are using this cryptography, you are basically encrypting data and decrypting it, but there's no way to prove that the sender is the actual sender. So maybe B is, B, uh, B is thinking the message is sent by A, but it is actually sent by C. How do you maintain that uh, identity here? Now that's where you can use something called a digital signature. Now we know about encryption decryption, but then there was no way to prove that the person who is sending the message is actually that person. Now the way you can do that is with the help of digital signature. Now what we do here is, what if we don't want to secure the information, but we want to prove that we are the real person. Now in that case, what A will do is, A will not encrypt the message with B's public key, which, was, which he was doing before. Now what A will do is, A will encrypt a message with its own private key. Remember that we are not using B's public key here, we are using A's private key. Now after encryption, the packet goes to B. Now how B can decrypt it? Of course, can I use uh, B's private key? No, because it is encrypted by A's private key. And the only way you can decrypt that is with the help of A's public key. If the decryption is possible, that means that there's a proof that only A has sent it. What if, let's try to attack here. What if C says, I want to send this data. So when the message is going from A to B, C comes in between say, hey, let me hack this message. And message is gone. Now C is sending a new message. And which key A C is going to use? C is going to use C's private key. And now when it goes to B, B is not able to decrypt that with A's public key. It is only possible with the help of C's public key. And now B knows something is wrong. It's not coming from A. And that's how you prove that the data is not coming from A. It came from some, someone else. But what if it was possible to decrypt that with A's public key? That means we have a proof that A has sent it. Now A cannot say later that, hey, I have not sent that. It's a proof, right? A has, A has encrypted that with A's private key and only A knows its own private key. And that's important. This is called digital signature. But there's one problem here. We don't have security. We do have a proof that who has sent it, but anyone can read data. You know, C, C, C can also read that data. Because when C gets this packet, 
uh, which says, let's meet at 5 p.m., C is able to decrypt it because A has signed it with A's private key. And to decrypt it, A, C can use A's public key. You're hacked. Uh, so how do we secure it? So that's why we have to do double encryption. I mean, think about this. What if you are basically first? So let's say A want to send message to B. First, A will use B's public key to encrypt. So first layer done. Then the same packet will be encrypted again with A's private key. So to double encryption. Now when the packet goes to B, B says, okay, it is encrypted with A's private key. Let me decrypt it with A's public key. Decryption done. That means there's a, there's a proof that A has sent it. And then again, the packet is still encrypted. So again, it will do decryption again with B's private key because no one knows the B's private key. And now B got the message and we have achieved security as well as identity. But what if, let's try to attack here. So let's say C comes in between and say, hey, I want to attack now. C receives the package and says, okay, it is encrypted with A's uh, private key. Let me decrypt it with A's public key. Decryption done. But now it is still encrypted with B's public key. Can C decrypt it? No, because B, C has no idea what's B's private key and you're safe.